Hey guys, so what I've got going on here is I've got an injection pump that keeps shoving the seals out of the, uh, there's a, what they call a, well, the fuel set off solenoid on the back of the injection pump. Uh, it's a standard iron pump on the 6715 John Deere. So we've got a, we already put a set of seals in it, and I told the owner right then, usually when it leaks there, because I've been down this road before, that it's, it's building too much internal pressure, leakage internally in the pump, and it's shoving the seals out of it. So that's what we're here, we're, We've got a new pump and we're going to exchange it. Okay, so on the new pump, pull this plug out right here, and they tell you to take, you can take an Allen wrench here. Colt, hey, calm down there before you run out in front of a car coming down a field road here and get run over, but typical lab, always going crazy. There's a small pin hole right here. That's not a timing hole, okay? You can stick an Allen wrench there, but these newer pumps like this, they turn by hand, but... I know you can't see it here, but you'll see a square slot with the pump out here in the vise or on the bench or whatever. And here's a, here's a, what is this, a 8 millimeter Allen. I just get it centered in there. There's a special tool that goes in there, but you can see how that, that's locking up. I just watch it and lock it up. I just get it centered in there. Like that. Let's put the plug back in there for now. I'm just going to hand tighten it because I'm probably going to stick the Allen in there once I'm ready for that. So it doesn't turn on me while, I, while I'm meshing up the teeth on this thing. But There's instructions right here. I think that special tool is a JDG1559. So, which I quite a few of these pumps on. It's been a few years since I've done one. He's about the only one on that. So that is, these 6715s were kind of a, they were actually a really good tractor for the sole fact that most of it was mechanical. It was still electronic. The DE10 pump kind of sucks on them, this injection pump. So what we'll do here is we're going to have to turn this thing around and pin it at number one top dead center. We'll do the same thing. We'll pull this. Let me get some brake clean. Let's leave that plug right there. Ratchet right there. Let's pull this off.
new solenoid kit on it the other day and I told him I said I don't know if it's gonna last I think you've got internal problems there and it's going through the path of least resistance because it's got too much internal leakage and it's building up too much it's almost like a hydraulic pump with too much case drain pressure it's usually it'll shove the shaft seal out of a hydraulic pump so what it's doing and the, the dangerous part about when they're doing this kind of stuff too can fill the crankcase full of fuel which it doesn't look like this one's doing yet so Seven eights. Take this here Allen wrench and shove her down there in that hole. Nice. I ran the ratchet across over the injection pump drive gear nut. And now I made a mark on the teeth because I was 100 and, or 360 degrees out. So let's see if that's gonna. That should be fairly close, right?
this drive and there's my slot is lined up there now and this so which you could probably double up on it shut this out and add that in there just in case let's uh, get this drive gear nut broke loose Sorry guys if it seems like I'm in a hurry. This time of the year, especially when these guys are still out in the field like this, it's especially when I've got a lot of things that I've got going on. I've got like I've got to I've got to leave here and then I've got a 9320 on the same place here that's got hydraulic problems and I think we're going to be I think the swast plate is stuck at full stroke or something like that. It, it's always on stall pressure. Anyways, uh, I got to go up there after this. They're I told them to go ahead. I diagnosed it the other day, and I was pretty certain that the uh, swash plate was stuck in the pump at full stroke. But uh, on those 9320s, the hydraulic tank is directly over the top of the uh, the hydraulic pump, and there's just a you know like a three-inch hose going to a nipple on the suction side of the oil pump. So you have no choice. There's no shutoff valve or anything. You got to pump the tank out. So you can get the hydraulic pump off. So I had his guys, uh, they're up there right now, pumping that hydraulic tank off while I put this injection pump uh, in the 6715. And then after this, I got a front hub seal uh, leaking on a Kubota M135GX. And then I've got a backhoe 580 Super L with a Carrero shuttle shift transmission in it that's got a bunch of slop and the gear shift and the shift tower. And none of the gauges in the dash work. That's at home. But um, I went down this morning there. And that 75C Challenger, uh, the one of the one of the uh, front hub, I like the the window for the hub on the front idler was leaking. So I told him, I said, let me fix that. I don't want him to run that idler out of oil. So I went down there this morning to get the serial number because I couldn't find it in my phone. I thought I took a picture of it and uh to to call cat and get that hub hub you got to buy the whole hub cover assembly because that window is like glued in there it's not like a stem code kit where it's got the little torque screws and you can buy a window kit no no you gotta buy the whole thing the whole thing in the gasket but anyway i went down there this morning to to get the serial number off so i could give them a call and i noticed oil underneath that challenger and i uh remember i, I had to pour like 30 gallons of oil, 35 gallons of oil in that thing. And now I, I, I found out why. It's uh, It's got a big like suction manifold from the uh, hydraulic oil tank that runs almost the length of the tractor. And basically all the pumps take a suction off that uh, suction pipe there. They tee into it and stuff like that. So um, the hoses just kind of were, they're probably whole, old and hard and and when it gets cold like this, uh, those everything shrinks up on you. So that thing sat outside there and shrunk up in the cold weather. This when I got there this morning, I saw the oil up. But anyways, I it's got a bunch of just regular hose clamps on it. They're they're double clamped. There's one you know two clamps per nipple. I ended up having to take half the side panels and and all that stuff off this morning there to tighten those clamps up and. And uh, we have to go back tomorrow morning and make sure that there's no leaks. Other than that, once I get the hub cover back on, he doesn't need the machine till next spring is what he told me. But I want to get it done for him. I've got a pile of money into parts into that thing. So I want to I want to get that done to him and get him built out and get the money coming in. But other than that, right now on this thing here, I, I'm uh, just pulling all the return line and the uh, feed line coming from the filter head into it and then all the injection lines sometimes on some of these you've got to break them all loose up on top there are the injection lines and move the injection lines back away from the pump a little bit sometimes it's it, it, it sometimes you can bend them a little bit but you don't want to bend them much because man they can be a bear trying to get them started back on there if you don't if you don't get them bent on there just right to, to go back together 
Okay, so we've got the ejection mount drive gear, nut loose, got all the turn lines, all that kind of good stuff, supply line, going to the pump body loose. So what I want to do now is get the actual mounting bolts loose. Yeah, they're hauling all the pipe out of the fields. Yeah, this one here kind of hard to get on. They're not as bad as some of these injection pumps you work on, where I mean, it's just you got to run three extensions back here behind between the pump and the block of the engine there to get, get them loose. skiff of snow and it's about gone already but it's still cold hopefully we have a good winter this year So I got that jam or the uh, taper lock broke on it and I did it with my air hammer because I didn't I got my t-bar puller out and I didn't have I, I got a bunch of uh, six millimeter bolts but they weren't long enough so we had to improvise we got her done without screwing things up so. now I'm hitting See what else am I hitting here? Oh, right there. I'm trying to do that without removing all these lines is what I really wanted to do. Oh, this one 
fuel lines really screwing with me here. slipping on you. There's a new seal on the pump here, this quad seal right here. Let's see if we can get the camera this way a little bit maybe. We're gonna have as much fun taking it put it back in as we can get it out. Probably huh? lines off so I can get this thing in there right. There we go. In there now. One of my caps came off. sure that we stay in time when we tighten this up where is that allen that I had no no
145 foot pounds. Okay. And we're still in time. That is a good thing. plug in there and get her sealed up keep contaminating from contaminating the pump and make sure I pull the bolt out over there in the flywheel Thank <laughs> you. 